In today's video, we're gonna test the output of polycrystalline panels versus monocrystalline. So we have a Renogy 100 watt monocrystalline, an HQST 100 watt monocrystalline. We have a 100 watt polycrystalline by Rich Solar and a 100 watt polycrystalline by Renogy. And most advertising tells us that the monocrystalline should produce more power. These are all rated for 100 watts, so let's see if they actually produce the same amount of power. And I've been waiting weeks for a hazy sky and today is perfect. There is the perfect amount of light clouds overhead. And at the end of the video, we're gonna test out some flexible solar panels because one of them got damaged. So we're gonna see what the output is like. So let's go over the prices. For the Renogy 100 watt mono, it's gonna be 120 to $130. The HQST typically costs around 100, but sometimes it's $90. The rich solar polycrystalline is only $80. And the Renogy 100 watt polycrystalline is $110. By the way, this test is not sponsored by these companies. I bought these with my own money from Amazon warehouses. So this is exactly what you guys would get if you bought these off of Amazon. This is how we're measuring the output of these panels. We have a lithium iron phosphate battery connected to an MPPT solar charge controller, and we have a watt meter. We did not series or parallel connect any of these panels for this video. So the first panel we're testing is the Renogy 100 watt monocrystalline, and it's producing 57 watts. Now we're testing the HQST 100 watt monocrystalline, and it's producing 57 watts. All right guys, moment of truth. Now the first polycrystalline test. So the rich solar polycrystalline is producing 68 watts. That's insane, that's really good. It's an $80 panel and it's producing 68 watts. Now we're hitting 70 watts. Dang, that's amazing. Now we're testing the Renogy polycrystalline and it's producing 70 watts. So practically the same as the rich solar solar panel. Now it's 69, so these are pretty much the same output. And because it's hazy, we're gonna do the test all over again to make sure our results are consistent. So the first panel is the Renogy monocrystalline 100 watt and it's producing 55 watts. Now we're testing the HQST 100 watt monocrystalline and it's producing 51 watts. And I think it's because there's more clouds kind of going overhead right now. Because usually the Renogy and the HQST produce the same amount of power. Now we're testing the rich solar polycrystalline and it's producing 65 to 64 watts continuous. Now we're testing the Renogy polycrystalline and some clouds have cleared a little bit and we're at 66 or 67 watts continuous. So I don't know what they're doing, but these are supposed to be more efficient and produce more when it's cloudy. But the polycrystalline are producing more power. Now we're gonna do a shading test. We're gonna cover half the solar panel and see how much power it produces. So the first one is the Renogy 100 watt monocrystalline and half shaded, we're producing 9.6 watts of power. Now we are testing the HQST partially shaded and it's 10.5 watts. Now we're testing the rich solar polycrystalline and it's producing 12.8 to 13.2 watts continuous. Now we are testing the Renogy polycrystalline and it's producing 13.5 watts continuous. So again, the polycrystallines are still winning this test. Now we are shading the top half of the monocrystalline Renogy 100 watt and we're producing six to nine watts continuous. Now we are partially shading half of the HQST 100 watt monocrystalline and it's producing eight to 10 watts continuous. Now we're partially shading half of the rich solar polycrystalline and we're producing 12 to 13 watts of power. Now we're testing the 100 watt polycrystalline by Renogy and it's producing 12 to 13 watts of power continuous. And because these are monocrystallines and these are polycrystallines, let's figure out what the surface area of each panel is. So 42 inches by 19 inches. And this is the same for this one. And this one's 39 and a half by 26 and a half, 39 and a half by 26 and a half. And just looking at them, these ones are a little bit wider, but these are a little bit taller. So they might be around the same surface area, but I have a feeling that these are slightly bigger. And if you multiply that out, that means that each one of these panels is 819 square inches. And each one of the polycrystallines is 1046 square inches. So those have a larger surface area than the monocrystalline. 
rich solar and their energy are practically the same thing. I mean, they look the same, but one costs way less than the other. So the rich solar is the clear winner out of all of these. It's actually $80 and it produces more power than the monocrystallines in the same amount of power as one that costs $30 or $40 more than it. So yeah, rich solar is the winner here. Now for this test, I have a damaged flexible solar panel. And we're gonna see what the output is compared to the exact same panel that's undamaged. And I've been using these for about a year and a half. Just so you know, you can hear the crunchies. So the undamaged flexible solar panel is producing 57 watts continuous. And the damaged flexible solar panel is producing 55 watts. That's incredible. I was not expecting that at all. I should also stress that these are high quality ones with copper back plating. So if it was a cheaper panel, it might be damaged easier. And I dropped this thing from the roof of this RV and it cracked. I mean, you can hear the damage inside. These cells are damaged, but it's still producing good power. Also take notice that there are no bus bars in the front of each cell. If you had one of those and you didn't have the copper back plate, it might be damaged easier. And then it wouldn't produce as much power. But because of the type of flexible solar panel this is, I guess they can handle some degree of damage. By the way, these are from ML Solar in Campbell, California. I don't know where he sources them, but he's super confident in all the cells that he sells. And yeah, I've always used this solar panel, so yeah, good stuff. Packaging-wise, the Renogy absolutely wins. They have foam, there's lots of space, and a big box. Rich Solar is made in India, and there's like this fine powder dust. But the Renogy is brand spanking new, it looks really good. I mean, you can see in this white paper how dirty this thing came. Iode box on either one looks really good in high quality materials. This one's rated for 1000 volts if you put them in series. This one's only rated for 600 volts. This one also has a thinner gauge of cable. This one's really thick. Whenever I buy professional grade stuff, it feels and looks like this. So Rich Solar did a really good job here. Check out the mounting holes. So Renogy just has this one right here. We have a ground. And then we have this mounting hole. Rich Solar has a lot of mounting holes and I really like that. That makes it very versatile if you're building your own system. The rails are a bit thicker on the Renogy. You can see how wide it is here compared to here. So the Renogy wins in that regard. But they're both single walled aluminum so they're about the same in strength probably. Practically the same size but the Renogy is just a hair bigger than the rich solar. It might be because of the rail. It's just a little bit bigger, but practically the same exact size. The front of these panels is practically identical. They have the same number of bus bars, the same number of cells, and they both look really good. Well, I was expecting the polycrystalline to do well because that's actually all I use on the roof of my RV currently, but I wasn't expecting them to do that well. And years ago, I had a polycrystalline and a monocrystalline. This was like seven or eight years ago, and they produced the same amount of power. And so I used to tell people, guys, they produce the same and no one would believe me. All of these monocrystalline panels, they always say, oh, higher efficiency, but they don't tell you how much more efficient they are. So I also did the calculation for the efficiency for its size, and it was practically the same number, but one produces more power for the money, and the polycrystallines just blew the competition away. And we also learned that Renogy is more overpriced than anything else out there, and their rich solar makes an awesome panel. I feel kind of bad though, because in the last video, we we're doing the monocrystallines and everybody was like, yes, the HQST monocrystalline is amazing. But I didn't tell anybody that all I use personally on my rig is polycrystalline. And then when we test the polycrystallines, they do better than I ever anticipated them doing. So yeah, guys, you do not need to spend more money for monocrystalline panels. Buy the polycrystalline panels and buy the rich solar ones. It's a high quality panel. If you guys disagree with me, please let me know in the comments below. If you think something was wrong, please let me know. And if you're new here, please check out my book. It's number one and number two bestseller for solar energy on amazon.com. And I also have a website, mobile-solarpower.com. I have all of my favorite components and solar panels and batteries and how to build batteries and so much more. If you're new here, please check it out. I update it literally every single day with, and this book is so useful that I even use it because I calculated all the fuse sizes out in the wire gauges. So super useful to have laying around and it's super cheap. So yeah, please check it out if you guys can. And the amount of people that return this book is like one in a thousand. So it's really good. People 
they get this, like it. And if you already have my book, please leave a review. It is so hard to get reviews. I will sell like 10,000 of these and I'll get like two reviews. So please, please, please leave a review if you bought this book. So thank you so much for watching. If you guys did not like anything or if you disagree with some of my results, please let me know in the comments section below. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.